What is up and welcome back. We're going to be discussing piston ring end gaps today, how you can file them, check them for their clearances and make sure that you're not going to blow up your engine. Let's head out to the garage and we'll get started. You'll want to first separate your top and second rings. You can usually tell that by the top one being a lot smaller in surface area than the second ring. Not to be confused with the oil rings, you can see these are pretty small. Before you begin to measure or file anything, be sure to clean out your cylinders thoroughly. You'll do this multiple times until the rag comes out clean. I like to use ATF and a lint-free cloth. After you've thoroughly cleaned the bore, you want to do the same thing with the piston ring. Clean that piston ring off because they may look clean, but they are in fact dirty. They will leave residue. So you can see that there. So once the bore is clean, the piston ring is clean, we can go ahead and begin to put this in and get our initial clearances. I'll square up the ring in the bore by pushing down on it with the piston to get an even level of depth all the way around. You'll notice there is a little gap there in between the piston ring. That is the piston ring end gap that we're going to be measuring. Now that the ring is in, we can take our filler gauge and get the initial clearances on our top ring. I'm going to be going for 18 thousandths of an inch. I'll start at 19 thousandths of an inch and work my way down. It does not go in. I'll drop it down to 18 thousandths of an inch and that goes in. As you can see, that one fits right in there. 18 thousandths of an inch fits. 19 thousandths of an inch doesn't, so I know this piston ring end cap is 18 thousandths of an inch, so I do not need to do any filing for this cylinder. We'll follow the same procedures for the second ring. I'm going to be going for 24 thousandths of an inch on my second rings, and as you notice right off the bat, these second rings, the end gap is very small. So we'll measure these up right out of the box. That's 14 thousandths of an inch. That one fits in there nicely, snug. I'll move up to 15 thousandths of an inch to see if this one will fit and that'll give us our clearance here. So 15 thousandths does not fit in. It stops about halfway. So I know this second ring is gonna be 14 thousandths of an inch. That means we're gonna to to take this ring head over to the bench and file this down. When you begin to file your rings, you're gonna to wanna to make sure to file on one side and one side only. You don't wanna be filing from both sides because you can take off too much material too fast. File very small amounts, check your clearances, come back and file more if you need to. There's going to be burrs on here where you just ground down. You want to take a fine file or a fine sandpaper and go ahead and hit the edges there so there are no sharp edges. You don't want those scratching up the inside of your cylinder walls. All right, moment of truth. I filed them down, checked them very frequently. Let's go ahead and see if I hit my target. There's 24 thousandths of an inch and that fits in there perfectly. I'll try 25 thousandths to see if I overshot. 25 thousandths does not go in. After you filed and got the correct clearances for your rings, you're gonna to wanna to make sure to keep these rings with the correct cylinder that you filed them for. You don't wanna mix them up in a different cylinder as you file fit these for the cylinder that they were matched to. All you gotta do now is repeat the process for the remaining cylinders.